Father Christopher, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you uh, on the Progeny podcast. Considering you, you, you're, you are a priest, um, what made you get into studying and lecturing about Islam? It started really with Fatima, Lady Fatima, because I, I was researching Hussein, and of course you have to then read about his mother. Yeah. And I was quite shocked that there's so much devotion to Fatima and so little written about her. She was a real person and played a fundamental role in the very start of, of the, the, the preaching of, of the prophet. And, and therefore you can't just, you know, have holy books about her. You need to discover who she was. So I decided to do my doctoral thesis on her. And I produced what I hope still and think still was the first real biography of Lady Fatima. I mean, in, 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 in a Western language, but based on the Arabic sources. And, and your, and your second book is on? So the second book is, is, is really, in a sense, a bit of a joke in that there were a group of us, there was a group of us in Rome, professors. Mm. All of us have doctorates in, in Arabic Islamic studies. So we were sitting around a table at lunch, basically complaining that the Muslim scholars are not writing about the women. The woman of Karbala, for example, substantial work. And we each decided that we would take a female figure and produce a proper biography. So, of course, I took Zainab. I said, oh, well, I know her mother. I'm going to now do her. None of the others were serious. So none of the others actually did anything. The book is called Half of My Heart because there was a lament that Zainab sung I think on the day of Karbala myself, some of the historians put it later, but I think it was on that very day when she mm -hmm. saw the body of her brother and his companions unburied. Mm -hmm. And and she refers to him as half of my heart, her mm -hmm. brother Hussein. And I thought, well, you know, half of my heart was the Fatima book, and now this is the second half, mm -hmm. the Zainab book. Now I don't have any, any heart left, I suppose, but I'm certainly going to tackle other issues. But Zainab is... Zainab is an extraordinary woman and, like Hussein, transcends all religious political barriers. She is a, a universal ideal. She, she intervenes a number of times, I think three, on the battlefield. Um, uh, and she's described, so, so I mean, I, I, I go into quite a lot of detail because I, I'm very moved by this. She's described in the days leading up to Karbala as quite distressed. She hears the enemy army coming and it, she breaks down. She hears Al Hussein making this lament about tomorrow so many will be dead and she breaks down, saying that he's had a, a vision of his own grandfather saying you are coming to us and she breaks down. So she's quite frail and fragile on the eve of the battle. But on the day of the battle, there's a remarkable change and even the Sunni authors record that she looked like the sun rising as she came out onto the battlefield. And three times she walks out of the woman's tents right into the middle of the fighting, uh, one to intervene when her nephew is killed. So, so um, Ali, uh, the, the, the oldest of, of Hussein's sons, is killed. A second time she comes out to chase after this little boy at Hussein's command and she can't catch him. <laughs> He's too fast for her because he wants to fight with his uncle. And a third time she comes out to challenge the men killing Al Hussein. And it's this famous challenge where, where somebody as, as terrible as, um, as Umar bin Sa'id turns away and weeps because he's challenged by her and he knows that he's, so, 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 so in that sense she is of great importance, but even more important after the battle because, yep. and this is where I get into trouble because, because she was for a short time the leader of the Ahl Bayt. There's no doubt about that. Uh, young um, Ali bin al Hussein was much too sick to, 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 to function mm -hmm. immediately after the battle, and his life, in fact, is saved twice. She saves his life later on okay. in the court of uh, when she's where they bef before Ziyad, but later that's later on. It's that it's that period of days after Karbala, from the journey between Karbala to Kufa, Kufa uh, to to the court of Yazid to Damascus. That period, however long it was, and it's difficult to know how long it was, when they were being interrogated and ill-treated, she was the pole around which everything revolved. Absolutely. And there's a particular moment where her, her nephew, Ali bin al-Hussein, says to her, be quiet now, let me speak. And that for me is the moment when he takes his place as imam. He's imam, but when he actually takes his place and takes over leadership of this group. But until then... It is Lady Zainab. And I always defend this by saying, 
She's not a woman with masculine virtues. Bravery is not a masculine virtue, it's a human virtue. So we, we don't want to say she was as good as a man. That's a terrible thing for me. She was an extraordinarily powerful woman who betrayed all the great virtues, by betrayed I mean showed forth all the great virtues that are equally right in women as in men. Bravery, courage, the ability to speak with great uh, articulation against injustice. And, and in a sense, she, she functioned as the leader of the House of Islam.